Hello and welcome once again to Shepherd of the Valley's weekly video services. I'm Pastor Dave Deckard and it is the beginning of November, a whole new season for us, also a special festival day during the church year, All Saints Sunday, when we remember the saints who have gone before us, those among us now, and the eternal march of saints as we all head together toward God's heavenly kingdom. We are glad that you are here with us and let us begin our time together by praying together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in hearing the word of the Lord from Matthew chapter 5. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. So on this All Saints Sunday, we get the famous reading from Matthew, the Beatitudes, where Jesus says that blessed are the poor and blessed are those who thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who are persecuted and who've lost loved ones and mourn, all of that stuff. And we're pretty familiar with those words, but we don't often think of how deeply they strike us and what they really mean. Now, there is and always was a tendency to follow this logic chain. God is good, therefore God gives good things. Therefore, if you are good, you will get good things. And if you are not getting good things, it must be either that you are not good or God does not love you. How tempting it is for people in power who have a lot of stuff or a lot of goodness, who have the power to shape their lives the way they want them, to follow this logic chain, for it leaves God on their side. They are the favored ones, and in addition to all these material things and relational things that they get that other people don't seem to have, they also get to co-opt God right over into their arms, into their laps, and yay, they've got everything. Except that's not actually the way it works. Here's the truth. No one of us is perfect. Another way of saying that, not one of us is any kind of saint by our own actions or works or deeds. The bar is way too high. Every time we want to measure ourselves as greater than other people in some ways, we can probably do it simply by finding someone who's worse off. But if we measure ourselves against God, against the expectation of infinite perfection that life in God is, against the expectation of infinite love that God gives to us, none of us measure up to that or even get close. As we have said sometimes before, you can be a person who has like 15 goodness units, and then you can be a person who has a thousand goodness units, and you can be what we call a saint and have a million of them. 
If you measure those three numbers against infinity, 15, 1,000, 1 million, they all fall infinitely short of infinity. And that makes the entire exercise laughable. If we judge saints by what we do or where we fall on that scale, the best we can do is say, well, that's a pretty good human being, which is a decent thing to say and a decent thing to be. But that's very different than saying that person is worthy to stand before God or that person is representative of God because none of us, when you scratch underneath the surface, truly is. However, that's not God's definition of saint. God does not define saint by how well you do. God already knows that you will inevitably fail that test, as will I. By the way, everybody from Scripture did too, so I think we can toss out those presumptions that King David was a saint, or King Solomon was a saint, or Abraham was perfect, or Noah was perfect, or Moses was perfect, or Elijah was perfect. All the figures from the Old Testament and the New, Peter, James, John, the disciples, none of them did it. Nobody is perfect. But God does not define sainthood that way. Instead, God defines sainthood like this. Hey, I love you. And that makes you loved and lovable and capable of sharing love, not just your own, but God's infinite love. Therefore, you are a saint. You are loved you are beautiful in the same way the child of a parent is beautiful. Now, a parent knows that their child is not perfect. A parent knows that their child will make mistakes. A parent might even know in the back of their head that that child will not live up to their own expectations. We all think when we have children, well, they're going to grow up to be just like me and they're going to do what I think is good and I'm going to teach them to do this right stuff. And as hard as we try, it never really happens. But at the end of the day, that's not what makes them our children. What makes them our children is simply that we continue to love and care for them and be connected to them no matter what. That's the same thing that makes us God's children. That's the same thing that makes us saints. And so, on the top of a little mountain, a long time ago, Jesus gathered his followers and said some version of, I know you have been told that when you suffer or cry or are afraid or empty, that it means that God does not favor you. But I tell you that God has not abandoned you. I tell you that the definition of saint and goodness and child of God is different than you learned. And here's what I say, says Jesus. When you are poor and going without, God loves you, and God loving you makes you a saint. When you are mourning the crush, crushing loss of the world in a way you cannot fix, whether that's mourning a dream or mourning the loss of an expectation or mourning the loss of a loved one who was dear to you and has passed on now, I tell you, God is here and God loves you. And that makes you a saint even in the midst of that loss, even through those tears. When you are longing for a righteousness and justice that the world cannot give, and as many times as you hope that things will go right, they never seem to, and you feel like giving up, and you feel like it's all going to amount to nothing, I tell you, God is with you, God loves you, and that makes you a saint. And there is still a purpose for your hope and your perseverance throughout all these things. Even if you can't see it today, there is a reason for you to still be here and you to believe in goodness and love 
and mercy. And I, I tell you, when people look at you and say to you that you are foolish for trusting in this, that you are a nobody, that there's nothing you can do in the world that matters, when they tell you you don't belong, you have not lived up, that you are low and despised. I tell you, says Jesus, that right then especially, God is with you, and that one small whisper from God, I still love you. I still believe in you. And note, God does not ask in that moment, well, do you believe in me? Because you know what? When we've been hurt like that, we can't. Even so, God comes to us and says, I love you. I believe in you. You can trust in that now and always. And I tell you, you are my child. And you are my beloved. And that makes you a saint on the level of any of those biblical characters that you have ever heard of. Because you know what? Their lives weren't perfect either. They messed up too, and the world crumbled around them just like it seems to crumble around you. But I am still here, and I will not give up on you like I did not give up on them. And so when you hear those great grand names of people that I loved who did great things in the world, you may put yours beside them my beloved child, my beloved saint. And in your own way, you are going to do things as great as they did, even if that great thing is simply not giving up today when it seems like the whole world is telling you that you should. This was Jesus' message to the people around him who were poor, impoverished, depressed, lost, whose lives and whose world seemed to be crumbling under the hands of Roman oppressors, under the reality of starvation and drought, under the misery of not having a lot of things or people to connect to that were life-giving and healthy. Jesus said to them, God still loves you. You are God's chosen one, and nothing will take that away. That's what it means to be a saint, to be beloved by God. And that is why today we celebrate all the saints who have gone before us into death as imperfect and mistaken as they may have been, they were also bearers of God's love and spirit, and that endures to the point where we do not have to mourn that we have lost them forever. The love, joy, and purpose of their lives will and does live on in God's eternal kingdom, just as God's love and spirit live on. We also open our eyes to the saints we see today around the world and ourselves. Of course, those who provide wonderful examples of goodness. We love that. But also those saints who walk in the midst of darkness, holding but a small candle of hope, who are doing things as great as any human being ever has by simply keeping that flame alive. We also look forward to all the saints to come and to all the joy that will proceed from them. Until that day when all things are ended and all God's beloved are brought together again in the life of peace, love, and joy, unstained by darkness, doubt, pain, or tears. A life that does not end for you and for me, the life that we are holding up that candle for. May new ideas and opportunities be made known to you this week, where the love that God gives you, the talent, the purpose, the joy, the meaning in your life, might find flower and growth 
in the world around you. And may you be able to see and recognize and bring out that sense of love, that sense of purpose, and that sense of sainthood in each other as well. So that when you look across the world, you are able to admit the reality of division, darkness, pain, and brokenness. But in the midst of that reality, you are also able to claim that something bigger and more amazing is central to our existence together. And that no matter what happens to any of us or all of us, that love and joy will reign now and forever in you, in me, and in God's beloved world. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us pray together. Lord, sometimes it's hard to see saints among us, out in a crowded world where people seem faceless and nameless, on social media where people are anonymous and sometimes cruel, in halls of power that seem inaccessible and oppressive, or even the saints we see in the mirror that we hope are good and full of love, but we're never quite sure because the world hasn't affirmed that in us. Open our eyes to your love and your grace and how they flow through our lives and through us every day. Make us your saints, not just in terms of moral goodness, but in being able to share that love and grace with other people, especially all those in need, those who are hungry or without homes, 
those who are lonely without family or meaningful relationships, those who are without jobs or clean water, those who are without peace in their home or nation, those who are abused or neglected, anyone in any need at all. Help us be saints for them and help remind them that they too are saints despite the pain of the world and that nothing that happens to us can ever take away your love for us, which is what makes us saints in your eyes and also in the eyes of each other. Amen. We invite you now to gather bread and wine or whatever you have on hand so we can celebrate together the sacrament of Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We invite you now to take the bread and the cup or whatever you have on hand and share it with the people next to you, saying the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are watching this by yourself, you may partake of the elements as I offer them to you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us during this time. As the holidays approach, we know that there's a tendency for them to either get very stressful and very busy, or perhaps very quiet and very lonely. And either way, we are here with you. We are here for you. You can find us every week right here with this service. There are other things on our YouTube channel, My Boise Church. If you live in Boise, you can come see us on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock a.m. at the corner of Victory and Five Mile Road, right behind the Maverick Station. We will be happy to welcome you. However you find us, know that God is with you. You are one of God's saints. And may God's love, joy, and mercy flow through you to the world this week. Amen.